Uh, so I was excited about that. I'm like, oh my God, okay, this is this is this works. This it's a vortex. And then I was lean I was leaning back on the sand and I was looking at the sun go behind the mountains as it was setting. And I thought, isn't it cool how we always think the sun is like setting but actually it's the earth that's turning? And as I thought that, I, I had another illumination. Oh, mechanically. And I thought, wait a minute. We've all been taught in our current understanding that the sun is here in the center of our solar system, right? Uh, since Galileo and Copernicus. And that the planets do something like this, right? Is this true? No. <laughs> that actually has nothing to do with the dynamics of our solar system. Although this is taught to all children uh, at school, even in my school there was like one of those little devices you know, that you turn the little thing on the bottom and the planets go around the sun. I don't know if you had those, but I had those in my school. And it's actually completely incorrect. Here's our close, uh, isolated system binding us in the butt again. Because the sun is moving 200 kilometers per second. And the planets are following at the equator of the sun, generating a huge vortex that has nothing to do with planets coming back onto themselves over and over again. See how different that view is just from not going with the closed system? Right? And I realize it's all vortices. Now, when you look at it, you could say this is 2000, this is 2001, this is 2002, and so on, right? Like the Earth. Well, this distance has nothing to do with the same point in space-time. After a year of rotation around the sun, the earth is millions and millions of miles away from where it was last year. Do you see how that starts to open your mind, open your consciousness to what's really occurring? I mean, I'm still one year old. For me? I mean, I'm still one year old. What do you mean? Well, there's no birthday, so you never get back to the <laughs> yeah, there is. Well, you know, the birthday, uh, actually there is still a birthday, and that's when you were two and you were three because you were changed. In fact, if the Earth came back onto the same space-time coordinates, then you wouldn't change. It would be the same year. Every year it would get really boring. <laughs> so, like, Groundhog Year. You know? <laughs> and so, you, you, that, I realize why every moment is a different moment. Every mo moment is a different moment because we're moving through the geometry of space time. And every movement through, every point on that spiral, is a different point, is in, is in a different relationship to everything else. Could you explain the Coriolis effect and how that fits into this? Well, the Coriolis effect, oh, that's a little more complex. Um, I'm going to explain the Coriolis effect l later on. It's going to be easier uh, with the graph on the computer. Go ahead. Well, well what you're showing is that time is actually a spiral, not a circle. That's right. So yeah, it's not, that's right, time is not, uh, and we're going to discuss that in a little minute here. Here, time is 
definitely this is like a concept of non of linear time, you know, but plot it over a spiral instead of a line. Okay? Because that's the true dynamics of our planet. Why is this important? Well, in physics it has its part and we're gonna see that in a minute. But I've used that in psychology. Uh, that is that when you look at this, you can say that in each point of time on the planet, you have left an imprint on the space-time structure where that planet moved through. Meaning that all the events that occurs on the planet as we move through space are imprinted or radiated into the vacuum in that very specific space-time coordinates. Why does that apply to psychology? Because when you, when you understand that, you can actually get somebody to go back in time in their mind's eye following the path, the true path, the true mechanical path of the planet through space and go back to an event that was dramatic to them. And what you do is when they get to that point, and you know what, it makes a big difference. Because if you try to get people to do that with the wrong model, which is the planet coming back onto itself, after you've gone back one year, it's too confusing. You can't do it. You see why? Because all the space-time overlap each other and it gets, it gets messy. But if you've got the right mechanics, people can easily visualize that. They instinctively know how to go back. They back up the Earth to the event that created uh, problems in their life and then what you do is you get them to visualize that event or to experience that event from the exact contrary point of observation 180 degree from what they observed the event from so if they had a traumatic accident or something you get them to change if they had like uh, you know, sexual abuse or, or all sorts of abuse, you get them to observe the event, not from the place where they observed it then, but 180 degree reverse from where they observed it then. And, you know, if, if, if they were the abused, then they become the abuser. If they were the abuser, they become the abused. And when they do that, the first thing they experience, it's very powerful, it's very dramatic, first thing they experience is empathy because they feel right away the pain and the fear and all the problems that this person was experiencing that made them have these actions it's very powerful and as soon as they do this the 180 degree phase of the two waveforms of observation cancel the event. And all of a sudden, you can see it in their face, and I've done this many times now. All of a sudden, because it cancels out all of the geometry following that event in the vortex change to the present moment. And they change right in front of your eyes. Some people that had major physical problems just got rid of them right there. And you and and when that and that and then all of the future possibilities change as well. Because that event is no longer present in their spiral lifetime. So that's one thing that's really interesting about that. Um, and it's been very effective um, uh, with Susie. Susie is still here? No, she's not. I'm uh, collaborating, hoping 
to uh, finish a book on the psychology of the application of this theory. See, it touches all levels because it ha because it is a truly unified view. So I was pretty excited about that. I realized what the wave was. It's a vortex. And I realized that the mechanics of orbital bodies in the universe are all vortices, spirals. But I was like, hmm, how do I make that you know, visually appro uh, appropriate for people to understand. I was thinking, I was thinking, I went back to my van and I thought, I